This is the first video in a series showing how to analyze a functional imaging data set from an MRI scanner of an object recognition study using SPM, the Statistical Parametric Mapping Toolbox in MATLAB. These videos will cover the stages of importing images, converting them and analyzing them. Um, we'll do some important stuff organizing the files, then some image processing steps realigning the images to correct for head movement, warping, normalizing to a template, and then smoothing before we can move to the next stage, which will be actually doing the statistics. This will involve specifying the statistical model, reviewing that design, and then estimating the statistical model. This is uh, going to be a standard block design using SPM. And once we've estimated the statistical model, we'll proceed to uh, quickly looking at the contrast manager to set up a t-contrast to look at the difference between uh, f faces and non-faces and a very quick summary of that. After those basic stages there's a lots of different other stages looking at different ways of viewing and uh, images, adding extra contrasts. Uh, none of these are in a particularly logical order they're just extra things it's a good idea to know about. The study we'll be analysing is a replication of a famous Nancy Camrish in 98 study on faces, objects and places. Uh, we're using exactly the same stimuli presented at pretty much exactly the same rate. Just as a reminder of what the stimuli looked like in the scanner, I'll flash a few images up now. This is what the stimuli were. The study consisted of blocks of uh, face stimuli, blocks of scrambled images, blocks of places or scenes, and blocks of uh, objects. Uh, each block was 16 seconds long, and in total there were four instances of each of the different conditions, plus some blank screen conditions as well, so a total of 21 blocks each lasting 16 seconds, so the important timing, um, each block started on a multiple of 16 seconds. So for example, the face stimuli started at 16 seconds, at 96 seconds, at 192 seconds, and at 304 seconds. So in order to figure out when the start time for each of the conditions was, just refer back to this slide. For this analysis, I'm going to assume you've got MATLAB and SPM up and running already, and it's easy for you just to double click on the MATLAB icon or get it started, and then you've already got SPM downloaded, extracted somewhere sensible, and pathed in so that MATLAB knows where it is. You start somewhere sensible on your computer where you do your MRI uh, analysis. I've got our data here for these five participants in a folder I've called Object for the Object Recognition Study and SPM is passed in so I can just type SPM space fMRI and SPM will start up with the defaults for MRI and the windows for that will appear in just a moment. To analyze the DICOM images we have, first they have to be converted into the nifty format that SPM can use. In the SPM menu figure window, there are options for image processing, for statistics, etc. But in the miscellaneous tools button at the bottom, you've got DICOM import. And you press on this, and the batch editor starts up. The batch editor is extremely powerful. It lets you uh, put together lots of different actions that can be duplicated and repeated on different data sets and it saves a lot of time and a lot of errors. Here we're just going to use it to very quickly convert some DICOM images. Uh, in the left hand panel we have a, a list of things to do. First is just DICOM import. This panel shows the information it needs to do the DICOM import. First it needs to know which DICOM files to import. So I just specify those. I'll start with participant 10. Right click, select all. I go into the selected panel. I click done. Next, it needs to know where to put the converted files. Um, I'm going to sort out all the files afterwards, so I'll put them in the same place they started. And so I will just select this participant 10 directory. 
and I'm going to leave the other defaults. The main choice is what format to use and we'll be using the single file nifty format with the .nii suffix. This is more convenient because it keeps together the raw image data and the header or metadata um, with information about uh, the raw data's uh, orientation and position in space, etc. So I could just click go and do the conversion for participant 10 there. But what I'm actually going to do now is just um, do the DICOM import for all the participants. Here we specify a single output directory and if we want to convert DICOM files from lots of different places the output will all go in the same place which we definitely don't want because a lot of our files will have the same name and be overwritten and we wouldn't be able to tell files apart. So for DICOM import I'm just going to replicate the module and then we now have a second module which is currently exactly the same. All I do is under specify I right click the selected images and unselect them and choose participant 11's instead and for the output directory I change that by unselecting participant 10 and changing it to participant 11. I can then replicate that module and change those files from 11 to 12 and then change the output directory Unselect 11, change that to 12, and then replicate that one, and then again just change all the 12s to 13s. So unselect the 12s, select the 13s, and change the output from 12 to 13. And then finally for the fifth participant, I'll change that from 13 to 14. So now I've set up the DICOM import. We can check them all working for participant 10, participant 11. Uh, it says 13, that's a mistake, isn't it? 12, 14. Hang on. 10, 11, 13, 12, 14. Shouldn't it be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14? Oh, right, no, they're, just all, they're all there. They're just in the wrong order. That will now work. We can just run this. What you can actually do, uh, in case you need to repeat a task and don't want to spend a long time putting the correct information back in, is you can save the batch file. And here I can save it as, say, DICOM import. And that will be having to save me just specifying it again. Normally you do that when you've got a long list of actions. So if I now just run that, um, what it's doing, it's reading the DICOM headers to see what type of images they are and therefore figuring out what to do with them. So the EPI images from the functional sequence are stored as mosaics and it'll just reorganize each one as a th single three-dimensional image. The T1 anatomical structural images are, s are stored as 160 separate DICOM slice files and SPM will put that together into one big three-dimensional volume. For each participant it only takes uh, a small amount of time to um, read the headers and then create the files in the nifty format. That's it for DICOM import. In the next video we'll look at what that has produced, how to rearrange it and then how to use it.